Standby like use 2 through 33, sound 1A through 7 on deck. Standby Q actors. Electrics, kill the blue run lights, please. Like you 2 and sound 1A. Go. From Arizona Theater Company, this is Hang in Focus with your host, John Daniels. Um, as someone that grew up in Arizona, it's a great way for us to share the work that we do worldwide. And featuring co host Janelle Bragg. That is our responsibility, is to reflect what is going on in the world. Streaming live from the State Theater of Arizona. So let's do it. Let's really use this moment to re envision our. Welcome to Hang in Focus, live with Sean Daniels. This is the new Arizona Theater Company. I'm just glad that you're here. On today's show, we welcome Alan Plato music director and pianist for ATC's upcoming My 80-Year-Old Boyfriend. Here we go. Welcome to Hang and Focus Live. I'm Chanel Bragg, your host, and coming at you now for the third week in a row as Sean is on vacation. Don't fret, Sean will be back next week, and we're really excited to have him back, and he can tell us about all his amazing excursions in the sun. In the meantime, we want to keep bringing you fantastic programming, and we have an incredible guest for this week, no other than Alan Plato. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Alan Plato. He has been an incredible music director uh, for several seasons. And so we're gonna kind of dive in uh, to what he's been up to uh, since he hasn't um, been living back home. The pandemic has allowed him to be around. And so we're really excited. Um, and we're excited to also announce that he's officially music directing uh, for ATC's 54th season, uh, open 80 year old boyfriend so you may know him from some of his work that he's done with lots of different companies such as child's play uh arizona broadway scottsdale performing center for the arts and phoenix theater and now of course we are so excited to welcome him into the fold at arizona theater company so without any further ado i would love to welcome alan plato come on in <laughs> hello hi how are you that was so that was good 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 that was such a did great did you like intro. your little intro <laughs> that was great it brought me back I was thinking, oh my gosh i'm really I'm old i was like because that was my very first tour that i did i was like oh what a what a baby back then that was your first tour okay so tell the people when that was because i'm curious oh 2010 was uh legally blonde Oh my gosh! Which I think was the second clip that you guys showed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, Alan, to our show. We are so Thanks, grateful to Chanel. have you here. And this is like you know our first kind of announcement as we continue to roll out a uh, different um, featured guests that are from our seasons. Uh, we are really excited to have you on for oh, eighty year old so boyfriend. Exciting. So exciting so, that <laughs> things are like moving forward. It's very encouraging. So it's, uh, it's a good time, I think. So I want to go ahead and contextualize a little bit for our audience. And so 80-Year-Old Boyfriend is a wonderful one-woman show. However, <laughs> the companion on stage will be our wonderful music director, Alan Plato. And they both will be working off of each other in this dynamic piece. And we're so excited. Um, we get to benefit at this time that you actually are home. And so we're going to tell our audience a little bit about what you've been up to since 2010. <laughs> and the reason why we're so lucky to have you at this time, but I just wanted to welcome you to the show uh, and give an official hi. I also want to point out there that um, during Cabaret, it seems uh, like your significant other was also in Cabaret, and so you got a chance to see us in Tucson when I think you were on break from tour. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, we were on like, I think, a one week break, and so uh, I was able to catch that. And then I think I saw the opening in uh, at the Herberger as well. So I, I got to see how it had changed um, going up uh, to Phoenix. Excellent For show. Sure. 
And so um, for any of you uh, locals that love D. Scott Withers, so everybody say what's up to D. Scott. I'm sure he's watching as we speak. <laughs> uh, so I kind of want to give you some love for a minute because number one, I've been a fan of yours for a really, really long time. Uh -huh. And I, but truly though, and like, although I like to claim you as our own because I'm official native Arizonan, I do know that you're not originally from Arizona, but you did, you lived here for, I feel like a significant enough time that we could consider you honorary. So talk, talk a little bit about like, where did you go to high school? Like, when did you first move here? Sure. Sure. So <clears throat> we actually, uh, I was brought up in um, Pennsylvania, very rural town called Bedford, which is like outside of um, like it's close to Altoona, Pittsburgh area. And so uh, my parents moved us out here um, in the early 90s. And then I went to uh, Gilbert High School in Gilbert. What is AZ. Gilbert's mascot? Tigers. Go Tigers! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then I went to U of A. Uh, and then um, after that, I started working up here and uh, here in Phoenix. And uh, back and forth uh, to New York, doing a lot of work out there. And then the pandemic hit. And then I was on tour with Beautiful at that time. And uh, thought, oh, this is only going to, you know, this is going to last a couple months maybe. And so I got to hang out at home for a while. And then, you know, a year and a half later, still a here. A year and a half later. <laughs> so, so let's unpack that because as an actor, right, we definitely know how actors have been affected during the pandemic because we hear about it a little bit more, right? But actors have still gotten a chance to kind of do things with like recordings online or, you know, there's been a real like innovative shift for how actors have tried to stay relevant during this last year and a half. But what is it like for a musical director when, you know, at this moment when the right. venues are shutting down, like what has your process been like during the pandemic? I mean, it's, you know, just as devastating, uh, same thing, you know, it's, it's um, our whole industry is just kind of uh, dissipated, you know? Um, so it's been tough, but um, I think, like actors, you know, musicians are finding different ways that they can perform and in, in different platforms. I think a, a lot of people, um, you know, have, have done the the virtual concerts and things like that, which have been very good. Um, and I know a number of people that have, you know, had to pivot in, in different directions and different careers, unfortunately. Um, but that's, you know, that's kind of the state of the world. And, uh, but I think there's light at the end of the tunnel. There definitely is. And so uh, we're gonna come out the other end for sure. Absolutely. And thank you for shedding a little bit of light on that. Cause again, like you're always, you always know how one side of the coin is, but it's just, you know, nice to hear like, how do you stay busy? Or like, how do you like, can, did you play every day just to kind of keep your fingers nimble or? <laughs> Recite singing or reading right. skills at some point. Like, I mean, what were you doing in terms yeah, of? Yeah, I was I was bringing out like old scores uh, that I had played previously. You know, just to keep up the chops. Um, you know, I was doing uh, a lot of teaching. Actually, not a lot, but you know, a handful of teaching just to, to kind of keep me busy. Um, yeah, you just find different ways that you that uh, that you can work on your craft. You know, and so I've been just busy doing that. Well, the thing is, Arizona is not too shy of making sure that you stay busy. Yeah, <laughs> you got really busy really fast. <laughs> so I know uh, you had a chance to music direct for a couple of shows, I believe, at the Phoenix Theater Company. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, starting, I guess, in, in March, they uh, when their outdoor space uh, got built, um, they asked me to music direct Ring of Fire, which I had done previously, uh, but this was a a smaller version, so a smaller cast version with um, with actor musicians. I believe there were six people. And so uh, I did that one. And then uh, right after that did uh, My Way, which is a tribute to Frank Sinatra. Oh, which yes. You which you came and saw. Yes, I did. And it was fantastic. Yeah. And you were wonderful in it. Um, and yeah. then for, for me, uh, also, shameless plug for everyone, uh, the United Theaters of Arizona Theater are producing uh, The Last Five Years. Um, and it's our very first inaugural show of us being yeah. a small starting company. And I am so excited because Alan has agreed to be our musical director for the last five years. So yay, we're so hey. excited. Um, 
And tell us a little bit about that challenge because uh, I'll inform uh, the audience. So we are actually doing the last five years in two languages. So half of our cast will be doing uh, the entire show in Spanish and the other cast uh, we'll be doing the show in English. And so uh, what has your process been like setting up for, for that? Because you're music directing that for us now. Yeah, yeah, we just started rehearsals for that and it's been great. Um, um, like you said, we have two different casts and uh, uh, you know, I've been in love, with, in love with the piece for so it's, since it came out, which was, you know, in the early 2000s. So to do the piece has been a lot of fun and to revisit it um, actually through different eyes, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the Spanish, uh, the Spanish cast is um, we have this great translation that we're that we're that we're doing, and uh, we have two wonderful singers, and it's been great. It's been great. Well, thank you so much. We're excited <laughs> to have you on board. Um, so enough shameless plugging. Let's get back to the good stuff. <laughs> So I am excited for everyone to get to know you on a deeper level. Alan and I have been friends for a long time, uh, so I feel very fortunate. Um, but now that you are joining the Arizona Theater Company family, I would like our patrons to get to know you as well as I do. Uh, hey. So we're just going to jump on in. So something I like to ask, even though, again, I said, like, you're, you're honorary, I still consider you homegrown. You've been here since high school. Yeah. Your home yeah. um, <laughs> so like what is your favorite place to eat here okay <laughs> <laughs> oh man um my favorite restaurant here mm -hmm. well you know you like all different kinds of stuff but you know like if it's just a nice night out and dining you know we'll go to you know pf chang's or il postino you know um, okay postino's local there we go yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's, we, we really like that you know nice glass of wine you know with some dinner okay and they have outdoor seating it's great outdoor seating exactly especially right now that's important uh yeah. what is your favorite performance venue oh my goodness you know i haven't caught a lot of um you know because i'm usually out of town working so i haven't seen a lot of stuff um in the local venues unfortunately um, well, okay, I'll, I'll I'll change this up a little bit um, because one of my favorite venues is the Gamage. So being absolutely. from here, right, like going to U of A, and we'll we'll unpack that too a little bit later. But going to U of A, and then like you know ASU being what houses all the touring yeah. shows that come through. Like, what was it like to sit in the pit? Like, I watched you from the nosebleed section, y'all, because. <laughs> <laughs> tickets but during carol king uh carol king's musical beautiful i was able to sit high enough that i could see you inside of the conductor pit and sure. i took a picture of you from way up there and it was like this little itty bitty allen head and i was like <laughs> oh i'm so proud, I'm so proud of you i was uh but yeah let's talk about what is that process yeah. like? oh, it's always so in. great always so fun to come and play game. this is my third time playing gamage on on tour um and I, it's so it's so great, especially with that show. Uh, you know, we sold out for um, for the entire uh, time that we were there, and so it was great to hear the audience. You know, it's like, I think I think it's probably I don't know how many people are in uh, Gamage seats. It's quite but a few. It's quite a few. It's one of the big bigger roadhouses on tour for sure. Um, so it was really really exciting. That's so funny that you got to you know see me at the keys. <laughs> I'll, I'll clue you in on a little secret, you know, because uh, there's like three or four pianos that we have on stage, and um, I actually have uh, I, I do all the piano playing. A lot of people think that. Oh, really? That you're conducting yeah. the other piano players? Yeah, that they're that the Carol actually now our Carol actually does play piano, but mm -hmm. those are all just fake pianos up there, so they're all kind of gutted, and it's just you can bang on them. There's no sound that comes out. <clears throat> okay, the act. Well, I have this pretty cool. <laughs> I have this aerial camera like that sits uh, above the stage that I can uh, that I can control and it can, it goes to any of the keyboards. So whenever they whenever they go like this, I can match their their piano playing so that the sound matches their movement. That yeah. is amazing. So then, how do they Full figure secret. out how to do that without delay? Because sometimes the video feed is just slightly different. Yeah, our our video the camera that we use is pretty right on. Um, but also in the rehearsal, I work with the 
the Carol plus all the Carol understudies, because um, a lot of them don't play piano. So the whole kind of movement about giving a prep to play, that kind of thing, we, we have to rehearse with them so they get it, you know? That's actually really cool. So I feel yeah. like, has there ever been a time though where you're like watching their hand movements and you're like, they are so not playing nothing awesome. <laughs> near real. And so then like you, have you ever joked with them and matched what they were actually playing? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's one scene, actually when she sings beautiful at the very end, the the keyboard, like about half the audience or at least the ones that are towards the front can can see you know so we really have to make sure that they're they're right but sometimes it's like you know especially like if it's an understudy who doesn't get to do it a lot oh for sure you know so they forget a lot of time so we have to like keep rehearsing them and you know on travel days you know i'll i'll see them just practicing you know at the bar or whatever you know oh <laughs> I'm like what's your put in rehearsal for hands you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> exactly Okay, Alan, walk the actors through what should their hands be doing here? I could exactly. not. Exactly. I was, I it's was tough. Going, I mean, I figured you were playing it because you, you mean it's a really intricate piano playing, but I thought the actresses did an amazing job at pantomime. Yeah. So. yeah, I mean, it's um, like I said, Kennedy, Kennedy Coggle, who played um, Carol, she's actually a pianist, so that's great. But um, yeah, it's, it's, I think, one of the most uh frequent questions we get I, I get like after the show comes down is when you know people come down to the pit and they ask was she really playing so you know i we get that a lot oh my goodness i'm, I'm also interested too how many pieces are in the pit specifically for for beautiful we had actually we had six um and uh yeah so it was uh two keyboardists drummer reed player guitar and bass Oh yeah, my but it sounded God. it sounded much bigger than that. It really did. That's why I was actually curious. I mean, I, yeah. like I said, I could see down, but I didn't know if there was like anybody hiding underneath. The yeah, we, I mean, we have good sound people. Our our sound engineers are great, and then you know you can do a lot with the keyboards to fill in the sound to make it uh, sound bigger. You know. No, that's a big question. So, do you yeah. travel with different sound engineers, or are you relying on the sound technicians that are at each venue that you guys happen to go to? So both. So we travel too. So that's the the main audio guy who who runs the board, and then we have one guy that's um, backstage, that's in charge of basically any kind of um, mics. Uh, if there's any mic problems or anything like that, or if there's pit uh, pit problems, then they'll race down to fix that. And then we'll hire maybe a couple locals in every city, sound, okay. sound guys, to uh, help with the load in and the load out, of course. But um, um, yeah, it's a, it's a whole team of people that, that make it work. Now, and if you're a Broadway tour or a national tour, like I'm sure that I, along with that comes like certain uh, things that are required for every single city. So I would assume um, with each venue being different, what's the monitor situation like for your actors? Like, are there monitors on stage? Aren't there? Yeah, like I'm, yeah. I'm curious about that. Yeah, I mean, as far as equipment and stuff, we travel all that equipment. So the monitors are always going to be the same in every every venue. However, every venue sounds different. Mm -hmm. You know, because we're talking sometimes it's. A thousand people. Sometimes it's four thousand people. You know, right. uh, so um, that's why we have sound checks in every single city because of that factor. Because it's you have to be able to suss out: is it a very dry room, or if it's you know um, mm -hmm. what what the sound is going to be like for your, your performances there. So sound check is usually is our first day into a city, right before right before our opening night. Oh my gosh, this is so fascinating. Yeah. So we're gonna dive yeah. a little bit deeper into this, um, but yeah. um, I did prepare some questions. So oh gosh, uh, okay. see, uh, the, I did my homework. Uh, so I just wanna actually like talk about just like a couple of different, so I broke it down into different like, uh, like what's the history of you working or, you know, things like that. So I'm excited yeah. to kind of jump into that. So right. what first got you into music and at what age did you start playing piano? So I started playing piano when I was about four and a half. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And then, uh, what was the first question? 
<laughs> no, that's okay. Um, my first question was, um, oh wait, now I remember what first got you into music. <laughs> oh sure. So I know. Uh the uh well, my my parents always played like Broadway musicals around the house, so um, so that got me interested in in musicals. But uh, my siblings and I, we all took piano lessons growing up, so it was just one of those things where it's like we had to do that. And uh, I uh, I was the only one that kept kept going. My brother took up uh, trumpet, and my sister t uh, actually she kept she kept going for a little bit as well as well. But I um, I was the one that went all the way with it. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, my parents played uh, Broadway musicals and then, you know, when we would take road trips, they would play Broadway musicals. And so that's how I got into musical theater. I just loved it. Uh, I, I never thought that I'd be like making a career out of it though, so. You were destined from the beginning. You didn't yeah. have a <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, and so I come from a very science uh, science family. So my, my dad's mm -hmm. a physician and my mom's a nurse. My uh, my sister is an engineer. My brother is um, my brother's uh, a nurse, and so for me to be doing this is is uh, is kind of crazy, you know. But really, just following your heart is, is what I what I uh, have always thought about. I also feel though, like give yourself some credit. There's a lot of counting. <laughs> <laughs> we only have to count up to eight, really. <laughs> <laughs> now, so when you are a conductor, I would assume that it's important for you to learn other instruments to kind of, or at least understand other instruments or to be able to chart other instruments. So do you play any other or? No, I don't play any other instruments. I picked up the saxophone like in middle school, but, um, oh, but no. <laughs> oh my gosh. How but yeah, you have to have a good understanding, especially at this level. How all the instruments work, you know, how what the pieces of a drum kit, what you know the, um, and what what sounds those produce, uh, um, you know, guitars and reeds and all that kind of stuff. And and that's one thing, I would say that I, I during this pandemic, you know, I, I'm still learning. There, I mean, there's so many instruments, and so um, I've kind of been just kind of learning on how, on the on the different instruments and the different families and all that. So that's been pretty cool. That's amazing. So yeah. in, in terms of like, I understand you started at four and a half and you kind of were like hooked from the beginning for Broadway musicals. So I guess for me is like, who specifically ex inspired you? Like what composer did you listen to that you were mm. like, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. Like, was it Roger and Hammy or Sondheim? Like, what was it that particularly yeah. you to do? I mean, we played a lot of that golden age era. Yeah. So that with my fair lady and Camelot and King and I, all that, all that good stuff. And to me, that's that was like those were the roots, you know, that's where like some mm -hmm. of the best music is written. I didn't come, I didn't come into like Sondheim and that until like way later. And oh, so, really? okay. Yeah. So I was but I was really drawn to like those classics, uh, musical theater early on. Just the like orchestrations that are just so um so beautiful and so full, you know, they had big orchestras back then. Dare I ask you who your favorite one is of all of them? Like, do you have a favorite or do you just kind of love them all equally for different reasons? Like old school musicals? Yes, or, or any, any musicals in general. Let's see, old school musical, I would say West Side Story is probably one of my favorite uh, as far as old school and then I mean, there's so many in, in the newer age. It's it's interesting to to hear how the sound has changed, you know, mm -hmm. uh, over the years. Uh, you know, I loved playing Legally Blonde. That was such a great show. Yeah, I, I could have done that tour for another couple of years. It was it was so much fun, um, and hard, deceptively hard, actually. So you always had to kind of zone in and and uh, and always be looking at the book, you know. I read on um, some blog somewhere, it was like the top 10, like most difficult roles for musical theater actresses. And mm. Elle Woods is up there. Yeah, it's rangy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Those uh, those girls have to belt really, really high, you know. And at early times in the morning too, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they're, and uh, you know, they practically never leave the stage. So it's quite a marathon, uh, marathon role for sure. Now I have a question. So 
Now okay. that you've done so many different composers' work, and I also know that you have also done a little dabbling in the composing and arranging. Yeah. You know, so let's talk to the people about that. So when have you been in that, in the other side of that seat, not just doing the conducting of someone else's score, but sure. tell me a little bit about your experience as a composer and arranger. Sure, sure. Um, I remember... I'm an arranger first, and so I was luckily lucky enough to um, get hooked up with a show that has been running for a very long time, and uh, I did some the arrangements for that, which is uh, Menopause the Musical. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> a little nugget of a show that's been running, this is, I think, 20 years, still um, still running. That is so wild. All across the world, you know, it's it's taken me all over the place, and it, I mean, it's such a, a little show, but it's... Uh, it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> it really is. So for any of our friends that have ever seen the Plaza Musical Local, then know that Alan was in charge of arranging all of the music yes. for it, which is incredibly exciting. I don't know, fun fact for our viewers, I actually played the Power Woman track at right. one point. At one point, actually, for a couple of years, I was consistently yeah. playing the Power Woman track. And the funniest part about our cast is we were all in our 30s. And so all the other cast referred to us as the baby cast. Right. And then <laughs> all the women we would do the kick line in the end would be like, so really, are any of you old you? enough to, <laughs> to go have gone through menopause? And I was like, right. actually, scientifically, it could happen as early as like, is your early, mid, 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 early 30s. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, don't discredit us. It could happen. <laughs> you know, what's so funny is that, yeah, so we, we've gotten a wide range of girls to play the show, but the music, the music doesn't change. And, you know, the women just love that and men love love that show because of the music and the, the it's a parody musical so uh the parodies are just <laughs> hilarious so i was involved with that show for like nine years and uh uh music supervising it and installing it in, in uh all these different places all across and the country other languages too languages we did this in spanish as well in la it ran for a couple months um I've been to Ireland and it ran in, in the West End. So it's been all over the place. Um, and so I did that for a long time. Just loved my experience with it. Cause it was, even though it was the same show, um, you know, all the actors and all the musicians are, are different. So even, you know, they're always bring different things to the table, um, different, re you know, readings of, of a line that you've heard for, you know, a thousand times, but uh, you know, they, they did it differently. And uh, we, so I was doing that for a while. And of course I wasn't, I wasn't playing a lot. Um, so I missed playing. Um, Cause when you're a supervisor, you're just basically teaching local music directors uh, the show. So you're just basically setting the show. So I wasn't doing a lot of playing and I missed that for, for a long time. And then, uh, then I got into touring just almost within a, uh, a year after, uh, within a year after that. So, oh, wow. and then that was a whole nother chapter. So it was literally one chapter and then the next chapter started. So what is the longest amount of time that you've played a tour? Like played one piece of music, like over and over and over again. So uh, I did the first national tour of Dirty Dancing, which was in 2014. Oh. And um, I did that for almost four years. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, four years. Four years and never missed a show. I'm proud to say. Perfect yeah. attendance. <laughs> exactly. Four years, people. That's it was probably. Incredible. I think we totaled it. You know, 900, 960 some shows over the time. Oh my gosh, and, that is uh, wild. Yeah, I. But you know what? I loved that show. I really, really loved that show. It was, I was such a huge fan of the, uh, of the movie. Me too. I'm a, no one puts really, baby in the corner. In the corner. <laughs> 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 and so um, I lobbied so hard to get it. And I went, I actually went through, you know, a series of interviews with the supervisor and with the creator, Eleanor Bergstein, who, who wrote the, the musical. And when I got it, I was so excited. And uh, so I stayed with it the whole time. And another fun fact is that the band that I uh, I toured with, um, they all did it the whole time too. 
and that never happens. Usually, you get you know a couple musicians that you leave. Build a family. I mean, we were just, we just played so well together um, that we just uh, I mean we were just really really tight just from from the beginning. And everyone was always you know working so hard to make the, the sound right, and they were just great guys. I, I miss them a lot. Um, it was one of my best touring experiences for sure. Oh, and at least the music was fun. Oh, I love it. It was all the music from the uh, from the movie. So you know we had. Uh, the mambo and merengue, all that Latin stuff. And then, of course, I've had the time of my life. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. That's the part. I mean, I Audience lift. scream, scream. I, I have wanted to do that stupid lift by real <laughs> <laughs> life. I want to run and jump and soar on somebody. Um, we'll put so it that. in the last five years. Okay, thank you. We'll put it, we'll put it in the last part. Our, our actors will be like, "Why are we doing this lift during we so. the last ten <laughs> minutes?" That is the appropriate time. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so I feel like with all of this, um, the experience you have, the extensive experience you have, and then the experience with arranging too. I know you've composed something. Like, what secret love projects have you been like? working behind the scenes on as you were yeah. composing Dirty Dancing. I mean, oh, dirt, conducting Dirty Dancing for four years. I know there's, you know, I haven't, I have all these like little pieces in my head, uh, you know, melody lines and things like that, that I'm always writing. And sometimes it's just, it's just cool to get it, sit in front of the piano, whatever city, sometimes in a, in a hotel lobby and just kind of noodle around. <laughs> um, that's always fun. But um, you know, there's this you know this, uh, this piece that I've been hanging, bringing around in my suitcase that I was like, oh, this would be a great musical. You know, yeah. it's not, not done yet, but you know, <laughs> it's taken a while. But um, so yeah, so I've just it's more like I have these different themes and different lines that uh, that I've just kind of been mulling over in my head, and sometimes they get down on paper, sometimes they don't. But I've been recording a lot of my sessions now, so, now so that I can refer back to them, you know? Well, I'm curious okay. now. So like, what's your, even if you don't have a subject matter for this particular piece yet, if you're some more melody lines and things like that, what is a subject that you think that you would want to create a musical about? Mm. I think acceptance, pride, you know, it's Pride Month. I think those are really important things for, especially like for, uh, you know, uh, theater for youth or young audience to uh, to build musicals around those kind of themes, mm -hmm. but lifting up people, you know, so I think that's, that's something that interests me for sure that I think is really cool. Well, let's talk about representation for a minute though. This is a good segue um, because uh, as a member of the AAPI community, like how many other MDs do you see of color in the industry that are touring or, or Broadway music conducting? Do you feel like there's a lot more diversity than maybe we know of, or is it fewer and far between to find mu music directors of color? Like yeah. what has your experience been like? Yeah, I think I, I think it's gotten better. I think there's still there's I mean, I can only name a couple like a handful um, from the community um, that I know of that are um, that are like actively working. Um, there's a lot of African American uh, music directors I know because there's there's been a number of shows that have that have called called for that. Um, as a music director, and I think a lot of women, the, uh, women representation as music directors is is definitely growing. Well, that's you know, cool. yeah, uh, you know, waitress is one that requires a, a female music director. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that on cool. Broadway and on the tour, and uh, um, the Donna Summer musical that came out a couple years ago. That's also female. I believe the whole the whole pit is is uh, female as well. So. Yeah. Uh, that's incredible. And I feel yeah. like that just came out right before the pandemic hit, though. Yeah, uh, uh, a lot of love before the, the world shut down. I think, but it's, um, yeah, I think it's gotten better, but uh, it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely, it's, it's better than it was, but it has a lot of work, work to do. Mm-hmm. 
Well, thank you for sharing a little bit of insight on that. Cause I, of course. I can only imagine, I know what the struggles are on this side of the table. So I'm just like interested to see like what it's like, you know, true access and representation. Um, you need to provide it, you need to provide both, number one. And the only way that you get the representation is to provide an opportunity. And I do wanna also point sure. out that with the United Colors of Arizona Theater, I'm so grateful that you were willing to, to mentor a, a, a potential music director um, for the last five years. And so we, we are trying to be a part of that change where we yeah. are uh, influencing that as well to to really saturate sure. the market with more qualified uh, BIPOC individuals in many areas, including in music direction. So sure. thank you Very for important. being one of our mentors. I mean, I'm so appreciative of that. Yeah, absolutely. I hope so. I mean, you know, we can hope that it gets better, you know, that this the landscape changes. But this is how it all happens. It's got to start. We we have to we have to be part of that. So for sure. Okay. So now to uh -oh. the juicy stuff. <laughs> so who who have you Oh, you don't have to drop names cuz I don't want you to get in trouble. But like oh. like uh who I'll drop them. Who have you loved working with? Because I mean, you probably have worked with several famous people at this point. So who <laughs> have you loved working oh with? And like Don't ask me the other, the other question. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, or what is the most unique process that are that are you don't even drop a name? What is the most unique process of a singer or an actor that you have encountered as an MD. So it's a very mm -hmm. like synonymous relationship, right? Like I know for yeah, me, yeah. if I'm feeling under the weather, if I need to mark or anything like that, then I go to my MD and I'm like, hey, this is what's going on with my voice. So I could only imagine what you've encountered across, yeah. oh, you know, several years of your career. Yes, 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 yes. I, I mean, I won't mention names probably unless one pops up, but... Um, <laughs> I do, you know, that, that whole process, that, that dance between you and the singer and, you know, the, the whole company, but, you know, uh, all the singers is, is definitely something that I pride myself in that developing a very positive uh, relationship with the company, making sure that they feel comfortable, you know, to come up to me if they if they aren't feeling well, or um, if they'd like to try something a different way rather than me, you know, dictating it has to be that way, you know? Um, Cause it's, you know, it's them that's gonna be on stage, not me, so. Right. I think that's that's really important to me. And I think that's part of um, why I've been able to work work so long is that um, it's, it's developing that partnership with a lot of the artists that you come across. I love that, but it's not always a partnership every, every time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll go through, through you know versions a b and c and then i'll decide which one sounds best and which which one you can do probably eight shows a week you know well, that's, I think that that's smart but i'm sure that there's some divas that feel like they have more <laughs> of a musical education than you <laughs> um so like what is one diva moment no names what diva moment from an actor as an md that you were like oh boy <laughs> Well, let's see. Well, the one that comes to mind, I mean, Menopause the Musical, uh, so it was running in Vegas for like, you know, 15 years, actually. Actually, it was running up until the pandemic. And uh, so we, we get a lot of like celebrities to come in the guest guest spot into it and, and leave. You know, they do it for a couple months or whatever. And actually, some of our, our other tours, we would do that as well. But some of those divas would come in and... Uh, <laughs> you know, want, want to try to sing it their way. And it's like, okay, you know, we've been doing this, this show for how many years, you know, and, and you know, it's, it's like an understudy. It's well, like, the they have to too, right? Like, so it is. Very set. in fact, being a person who's done the show, it's like down to, if your finger point isn't this, <laughs> oh, you know, it. That's it's so very specific, right? Um, even down to the totally. choreography. So um, I mean, I it's, it's a testament to why that, that show has run a long time is because it's, been the same if you see it in vegas or you see it you know in, in iowa it's the same it's the same right. the creator was very smart in um having them uniform all the way but every now and then you know we'll we'll get a, a, a guest spot a guest star to come in and off camera i'll tell you i'll tell you a few of those <laughs> names <laughs> i cannot wait i'm like oh, what patty lapone moments have you missed <laughs> i mean some are, are just not good singers and you're thinking oh man 
this was a bad publicity move. You know, this is mm -hmm. not good. Let's cut no, that song. That does happen, right? Where to sell a tour, they were like, oh, you know, I, this is not me coming for her. I actually think she has a lovely voice. But like Christy Brinkley is starring in, you know what I mean? And so, like, yeah, and it's like, really? I didn't yeah. know <laughs> I'm not coming for you, Christy, especially if you're a featured guest on Hang and Focus. Ooh, I'm sorry. Um, well, and in the spirit of this fun, um, who would you like to most collaborate with that you haven't met? Oh, wow. Oh, I think those new writers, Pasek and Paul, Dear Evan Hansen, mm -hmm. Greatest Showman. I mean, they've they're just like on the rise. I mean, they're 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 so fantastic, and their music is is really kind of changed that landscape um, as far as music, you know, it's really toast the line between, um, you know, pop song and, and musical theater. Cause so many I, of their songs are like standalone. They songs. are, all of them are right. Which is great that that's a, a tribute to their beautiful um, music direction and composing yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. They write beautiful music, beautiful music. So th they would be some people I would love to, you know, be in the room with, you know, all right. Well, we have prepared a game show for you. Oh my you. gosh. We're going to ask you some fun and exciting questions. We're going to basically okay. have, we're going to play a little bit of a tune and then we're going to see if you can guess which of these musicals it is. And this is all musicals you've done before. Okay. Four years, probably. Okay. <laughs> I'm interested to see <laughs> how well your memory is jogged post pandemic. Wow. This is okay. This is, I've got to listen to this. All right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Ready. Oh, my gosh. You got 10 seconds. That's it. Oh, that's really hard. Oh, man. I don't even know what song that is. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to guess Elf the Musical. Okay, chains. <laughs> that was chains. Oh, okay. That's really hard. Three three notes is really hard. Three notes is really, really hard. The average person couldn't do it. You would <laughs> laugh because uh, my guess would have been elf. So <laughs> I was wrong for sure. Okay. Name that tune. Number two. Oh, wait, that's just the strings. Uh, <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> I'll say uh well I'll say Jersey Boys. Um can even tell you what song. Uh Stay. Ah, oh, so okay, good job. You got Jersey Boys. Really, wow. really good job. Um, and not the right song, but Still, you got the right music. I'm surprised I got Jersey Boys. All right. That's half a point. <laughs> half a point towards your bragging right. All right. <laughs> Let's cue up song number three. <laughs> Legally Blonde. Um, Legally Blonde remix. Okay. Let's see. Two and one. <gasps> okay, all right. Again, I don't know. I don't know how this is happening. Yeah, first of all, though, I'm actually really impressed. I mean, <laughs> I am too. I'm impressed with myself. That the song is a really difficult to do, right? But the oh. fact that you're actually getting the musicals is <laughs> pretty impressive. So okay, let, let this be a note for young music directors. I, I. <laughs> The, the strings used in Legally Blonde are different than the strings used in Jersey Boys. So maybe that's how I'm able to discern the, you know, the timbre of them. Um, that was really <laughs> impressive. I think you could go home knowing that you did something really difficult. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to write that under special skills for my resume. You have to. You have to. I could, I could determine what strings are from what musical. <laughs> Oh my gosh, exactly. So thank you for, for being incredible. So congratulations. Is that it? Just those three? Uh, I, yes, just those three. We we didn't want to like stress you out. Oh, <laughs> I'm sweating. Interview. I'm sweating just from those three. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so as we're starting to wrap up um, our broadcast, yeah. I just want to like just get in there and talk about some really important things because there's just so much like how do you get into this industry? So I just want to kind of go and delve deeply quickly into yeah. your why. Like, like, so what are your three favorite aspects of being a music director and, and kind of why? Yeah. Um, well, how to get in into it, you know, obviously I study piano and you have to be, you have to be really good at your instrument. And um, uh, especially if you're a pianist, actually with other instruments as well, you have to, you have to, uh, know a lot of different styles and you know one of my biggest things you know when i talk to uh college kids and stuff is is you have to say yes to a lot of things in the beginning mm. and that's where you gain the experience of you know even if it's just playing for church or playing for this party or whatever um even if it doesn't pay anything that's where you gain all that experience you know early on in your in your career and that's the same with acting too. So that's such a real thing. Like I didn't say no to a single thing for, I feel like yeah. 15 years. Yeah. 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 Just that experience. Absolutely. Cause you never know when those, when those things are going to come back up and, and someone asks you, Oh, do you, do you play Latin music? Oh yes. You know, you right. know, I, I did that five years ago or whatever, doing a gig. So kind of always working on your craft and, and knowing all the different, parts of your craft. It's probably a, a big thing. So talk yeah. about the process a little bit. How, oh, do sure. you, how do you go about when you're like, okay, I'm going to coordinate like our very first music rehearsal. Like what is your process? Sure. Like, do you grab the script? Do you notate the script? Like what's your. Sure. Well, even going back a little bit further, uh, like uh, especially at this level on, on the tours and stuff and on Broadway, we get hired by a contractor and there's many different contractors um, in New York. Um, but we uh, we get hired by a contractor, and he he or she puts together uh, the best band or orchestra for that project. Because you know, not every player is going to be the best fit for every tour, right? And you know, um, so it's uh, so they get they hire all the uh, music directors and and all the instrumentalists. But as far as the process, yeah, I always start you know with the script and the score. The score primarily, but I always, you know, if I can try to find different versions of it online, sound, uh, the soundtrack or the um, Broadway cast recording is always a, a good start. There's so many nuances that you can pick up through those. So I really kind of um, just kind of, uh, what do you say, you know, just bathe in that in that cast recording for <laughs> a couple <laughs> weeks. So, you know, you really kind of live in that score. Yeah. And that's that's you know for any show that you do really, um, yeah. And so then I start you know song by song working through the score, deciding where the where, who's going to sing what part and and um, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then you know our our job is as music directors starts from day one all the way till the close of the show. You know a lot of people think like the directors are there for the entire for the entire run, but music directors we are there from the beginning all the way to the end so it's it's really important actually that's one of my things i think is consistency is is huge for me mm -hmm. from from instrumentalists all the way to singers so we have a responsibility to to the creator and the directing team to make sure that we do the same show eight eight shows a week now there's going to be a little bit of you know push and pull but we've got to stay in that in that in that big picture small picture you know well, and I was going to say, like, I know for an actor, like sometimes it can be pretty daunting about like the role that you're taking on. Like for me, that role was Effie White. I learned a lot about myself doing that role specifically of how far it could test my limits as a vocalist, you know, singing that type of rep for an extended period of time um, sure. and also connecting emotionally to a piece. So I feel like as an MD, I feel like it would be similar. Like, is there a mammoth, a mammoth score that you were like, I... I'm a little intimidated mm. to to conduct this or to play this. And you're like, okay, I'm going to have to practice to get my fingers more nimble to do some of these changes. Yeah. Or was there anything like that in particular that, you know, calls to your memory? I mean, probably West Side Story is a pretty um, intricate score. Um, Ragtime is all is a is a oh, score as well. You know, Love you know, and that one. Uh, but they all have, you know, every score has their challenges. You know, a lot of um, especially a lot of the shows that I've been doing recently on tour, 
um, is so much about like the groove, you know? And so, um, you know, beautiful and Jersey boys, you know, you can get a lot of people to, to, to play that score, but it's, you have to make sure that everybody grooves the same, you know, cause that's, uh, it's, that's more than just notes on a page. Now, so. also in terms of MD, you pace, right? So it's important for you to keep consistent pacing for the show because your your right. dancers are trying to like land those eight counts in the same way that they always have. And consistency right. is really yeah. important. So how do you remain consistent, but then still like energize the audience, right? Right. Like if, yeah. the, if it feels like it's dragging a little, like a little bit, do you have kind of, I don't know, carte blanche to be like, I'm going to take this a couple of clicks faster or, or like, what is that relationship with yeah. them? with your actor as well not really i mean uh, so much of that is um you know so much of that is are the players that are in the pit with you you know that that they can follow you um you know i have a pretty good sense of tempo so i think uh if they can follow you that you're that you're trying to push them along to get to the right tempo because you know everyone's feeling is different you know if, if i'm at the gym and if i if i'm at the gym one day and i'm you know i'm just uh I'm like, go, go, go. You know, sometimes like tempos tend to increase or the opposite. If I'm, if I, if I didn't go for a run or whatever, then sometimes they drag, you know, those things mm-hmm. kind of happen. But yeah, it's like, uh, if you have to make sure you're surrounded by good musicians to, that'll go with you. But, um, and no yeah. matter what happens. So that, so this is a good segue to my next question. So what's the most embarrassing moment oh, that you've God. ever had as a conductor? And again, the band is following you. So I can only imagine. Yeah, Has there any been any major derailments that you're like, how did that even happen? Uh, we, I guess one that comes to mind is um, we were in somewhere in Georgia for on Jersey Boys tour. And um, we're playing, we're, we're the very last song and the power went out in the entire theater. <laughs> so the only instruments, so the keyboards were out, the uh, the guitars were out. Um, uh, the only, I think you, the only thing you could hear were the dr- <laughs> were the drums because they were live. <laughs> so can, imagine trying to hear, you know, a song with just the just the drums, and it, and it was just funny to see like the actors kind <laughs> of not knowing what to do. Um, oh, another one that bring that comes up to mind is um, a couple years ago on Dirty Dancing, we we were um, a tornado hit that town oh, yeah. I can't remember oh, where we were no. at. It, was, it was when all these uh, tornadoes were hitting the midwest and we were kind of like following we called it we called that one the state of emergency tour because i would say there were three cities that we went to that were like some really bad things happen and so oh, so we uh we had to call the show in the middle of it we, we uh, stopped audience i think the audience came out of the theater and then they put us in this big, big, big holding room. It was like a huge rehearsal hall. So it was like cast was mixed with um, audience, but they were loving it because they were just, you know, they got to meet all of us. And then I think we played a few songs, those that had acoustic oh, instruments. But that was probably- amazing. What a different <laughs> yeah. experience though. Oh, I, I have experienced while being on stage, uh, fire alarm. Fire alarms? <laughs> like off. And then it's yeah. like, and I, we had never ran that simulation. So the whole cast was like, just during hair. What do we at do? Every theater company. And we were like, I guess we walk off stage now. <laughs> so, so we walked off stage and our stage manager got on the God mic and was like, hey, just so you know. And then after they assessed everything was okay, literally on the mic was like, okay, actors restore to page 62. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and we walked right back on stage. The audience yeah. snapped. And then it was like, take it from this line. But you <laughs> know, those times when, like when you come, when you come back, the audience like loves it. They just scream. Mm-hmm. They just, they just love that kind of stuff. It's exciting. It's exciting. But you just never know what's going to happen. Live theater, right? Mm-hmm. Now you have been to a lot of beautiful venues. And I know I asked what was your Mm. favorite venue in Arizona, but what is Mm. your favorite like venue overall that you've performed in? Yeah, I have, I have two. The, uh, in Philadelphia, there's the um, Academy of the Arts. It's a beautiful historic. um, Yeah. I should look up some of the pictures online. It's just, it's gorgeous. It's very, it's, it's old, but it's just beautiful. 
it's like a, almost like an old opera house. And then newer venues, the uh, the one in Vegas, the oh I can't remember the name now, um, is probably is a beautiful beautiful new venue that they do all concerts and all the road shows. Is this the, tied the, to like, uh, Smith Center? Smith Center. Okay, okay, yeah, I was gonna say, is it tied to one of the casinos? <laughs> you would think, right? No, it's on its own. It's uh, it's close to like old um, old Las Vegas. Yeah, but it's oh, built. Yeah. It's it's got like um, Art Deco in the lobby and everything. It's 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 very very nice. Okay, so yeah. rapid fire, rapid fire. Okay, so hit it. What's the most useless useless talent that you have? Um, I like to cut coupon <laughs> coupons <laughs> coupon coupon cutting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you do you sing in the shower or what song? Uh, I warm up in the shower. Yeah. I do. Okay. Is there a particular song you like to sing? No, although it's usually whatever show uh, that I'm like teaching. Like this this morning, I woke up with, of course, last five years because I was teaching that for like four hours last night. <laughs> so it's That's hard amazing. to get that out of your head. Now, what would you be doing right now if it wasn't for your music career? So you did say that like all your family is like scientists, engineers, yeah. nurses. Do you think you would have fallen into that? Or what do you think you would be doing if you weren't as a, a music director? I probably would have. I probably would have gone that route. I know, you know, every, especially in Asian families that, you know, the they kind of tell you what what, uh, what to be, you know, and so to go that way. I probably would have gone into that, maybe pharmacy or something like that. Um, which I'm so much happier now. Oh, <laughs> which famous musicians do you admire? It could be pianist. It could be any. Ooh, let's see. Um, I'm getting into jazz and stuff lately during, over this pandemic. And of course, you know, uh, I just did my way. And so um, Frank Sinatra was amazing. Yeah, his, his stylings were amazing. What is the best advice you've ever been given? I should say related to your field. Yeah. This is, this is, uh, be, be nice. Mm. It's so simple, but be nice to people, you know. I bet you that's huge. And actors take, take heed of that. Your music director <laughs> has the power to make you sound real crazy. <laughs> be nice. <laughs> be nice. Um, if you could change anything about our industry, what would it be? I would say, you know, what we had, what we were talking about previously, you know, better representation. <clears throat> okay. All the way from, uh, from the top down, all the way. And if I were to give one last question, what is one message that you would give to a young artist trying to pursue a career in the musical theater field from your perspective? Yeah. Uh, I would say, you know, do it all like say yes and, and do, um, Know your instrument backwards and forwards. Know everything that you can about your instrument, all different styles. That would be my biggest advice because that'll pay off later. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Well, now is a good moment to do a little bit of shameless plugging. So please oh, tell us about your upcoming projects that you have coming up. Uh, that sure. way we can support you. Of course, Great. as we know, Alan will be the music director for 80-Year-Old Boyfriend. We're so Yay. excited. Hey, TC. For it's our finally going to happen. Finally going to happen. Our season opener. He, you know, you've been with us for a year and a half now talking <laughs> about this show because uh, we were going to do it earlier before it we, was had gonna have, we had all these false starts. <laughs> yes, yes. So we're so excited to actually be going into production, uh, you know, at the end of the summer, That's preparing right. for that. And so that, of course, 80 year old boyfriend is coming up. And what other projects do you have coming? Yeah. So, of course, we talked about last five years uh, in English and Spanish. That'll be at Scottsdale Center. And then um, I will be in Pump Boys and Dinettes, which is at the Phoenix Theater Company at the end of, um, at the end uh, in July. Um, and so I'll be, I'll actually be a character in that. <laughs> so this is my return to the stage and as well as music directing. Yeah. So we have um, a wonderful cast of six actor musicians and we're just going to, it's really a lot of fun. It's going to be so, so much fun. Uh, the music is just like very down home and it's, it's going to be a, a good time. And so you'll, you'll see me on stage and I have a little, uh, 
special number in the middle of the show. And I can oh, tell oh, you what happened. Oh, come on, Lolo. Hey, yeah. lines. <laughs> lines, acting, hello. <laughs> oh my God, I love that so much. Well, Alan, yeah. honestly, uh, it is truly our gain that you have been here. I mean, the pandemic brought us a lot of, you know, terrible, you know, you know, uh, mm -hmm. problems and, and, you know, a lot of bad things that have happened in the pandemic. But one of the, if I were to find the silver lining is that you've been home longer than yeah. you've been home for a while. Cause you've been, you know, you're so, you know, such a great MD that you've been working consistently for, you know, over 15 years. Like that's yeah. huge. And it's just a testament to the type of, type of professional that you are. And we're Aww, just, thanks, so, well, it's just true. And so, you know, I give it up for my local, my local faves. And so, Thank you for well, your. And thank you for this. This was such a such a fun time, and thanks to you and Sean for just really, an Arizona theater company for just really, getting us there. You know, I know it's it's been hard, but um, you know, with with you guys and, and your company, you're really, this is very important that we uh, have a strong opening, and that we have a successful season coming up. And so, um, that's not easy. I mean, we know that there's a there's a lot of shows and a lot of theaters that have totally dissipated and, and gone away because of mm -hmm. this. It's, it's, this is not, it's not an easy industry. <clears throat> it's so true. And so. we're grateful too. And I feel like it's all the timing. It's all kind of lining up. I mean, the CDC just released like a bunch of different restrictions. You no, know, they lifted a lot of restrictions, uh, you know, equity zone board now. And they're like, Hey, you know, look, look, pay attention to what your city needs. I mean, I attended yeah. a show inside of a theater for the first time last night. So, so there is movement, and I feel like by the time we go into our first show, everybody is going to be like ready and rearing to go. And I'm just so grateful. So, thank you, thank you, thank you to you. Oh, for thank you, Chanel. Back. I appreciate you. This has been lovely, and I hope I appreciate you too. It's much fun getting to know you as I've known you across the years. <laughs> but thank you for being a guest and hanging focus. See you later. All right, thanks. Love to you guys. Thank you. Bye. Well, there you have it. We are so incredibly excited that we have Alan on the team here at Arizona Theater Company, and we are grateful and cannot wait for you to see all that we have in store for you this season. Until next time, uh, please check out our call board, and Sean, we'll see you next week. This is your call board for June 4th through 10th, 2021. Hi, I'm Will Rogers, Community Engagement Manager for Arizona Theater Company, and thank you so much for joining us today. Where Chanel sat down with Alan Plato, music director for our upcoming production of 80 Year Old Boyfriend. It was a great conversation. And be sure to join us next Friday, June 11th at 4 p.m. Arizona time when we sit down with members of the company of Miss Bennett Christmas at Pemberley. Our upcoming Christmas production, we'll be talking with the Arizona based actors that will be appearing in that show. So you don't want to miss next week's show. Now let's head on over to the Giving Corner and find out what development has for us today. Hello everybody, it's Paula Taylor, your Chief Development Officer here at Arizona Theater Company. Today on The Giving Corner, we wanted to thank Ameriprise Financial. For 125 years, they've been helping clients prepare for their brilliant retirement, but it doesn't stop there. They've given to national nonprofits and they also really give locally to those in need. And we at Arizona Theater Company can't thank America, Ameriprise Financial enough for their generous donation. They really truly understand that live professional theater helps build community, helps support our state. And the fact that they see the value in professional theater and the faith that they have in Arizona Theater Company warms our hearts. We can't thank you enough. Everybody have a wonderful weekend and take care. Put some sunscreen on because it's getting hot out there. And I'll see you next week. Thanks, Paula. And now it is time to find out what's happening at theaters around Arizona with our newest member of our Hang and Focus team, the new voice of Ghostlight, Alex Hollis. Take it away. Thank you so much, Will. All right, this week we will start up in Phoenix. TheaterWorks is bringing us Curiouser and Curiouser 2, written by Kyle Olson and directed by Chris Hanby. This will play through July 25th and COVID-19 protocols will be observed. Check out more at CuriouserTheater.org Bay 55 is bringing us The Hidden Sea, written by Ashley Naftal and directed by Sarah Starling. This online-only event will be available for streaming until June 6, so you still have a little bit more time to check that out. Learn more at space55.org. 
Now let's head on down to Tucson. Grinding Road Theater is bringing us eight tens in Tucson. This is Grinding Road's third annual 10-minute play festival, featuring eight original scripts chosen from hundreds of submissions from all over the United States. Eight tens in Tucson will be available for streaming until June 30th. Check out more at grindingroadtheater.org. And a Tucson Museum of Art currently has an ongoing exhibition of indigenous arts. COVID-19 protocols are observed and you can learn more at tucsonmuseumofart.org. Thanks, Alex. Oh, and Alex is responsible for the digital design of the Hidden Sea at Space 55 in Phoenix. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. It's pretty freaking cool. And if you enjoyed today's conversation, please tell a friend, pass it along, like us on Facebook and Instagram, subscribe to us on YouTube and ring that bell so you get all the updates on our latest content. And before we go, we talked about it last week on our education episode with Jasmine, but uh, there is still room in our summer on screen, uh, summer workshop, and we hope that you'll be part of that. So check out this package we put together with content from last year's workshop and have a great weekend, everyone. Be safe out there. surprisingly good for a digital thing. This workshop has been more functional than the last quarter of my school year was. I am tired, but not in any form burnt out. So bravo, bravo, bravo to all of the students and all of the hard work.